Hello, welcome to the Lulu Loves Crochet Podcast, episode 28. My name is Emma and this is my podcast all about crochet and crafts and um, anything else I feel like talking about really. Um, how is everyone? I hope you're all well. Um, I'm so happy that February is finally here. Um, although it's still pretty grey and wet outside. So, <laughs> But um, yes, I'm very, I'm very happy to see the end of January. I feel I can finally get going with the new year now. So um, I have a few things to talk to you about to to talk to you about today <laughs> oh I feel like it's going to be one of those videos already um I will just get straight in with what I finished and they are lots of there's lots of small projects um this week because I still haven't um really found it in me to start a bigger project yet um I do have a couple of ideas now for things I want to do um but I know that I've got some editing coming up for the book so I think in my mind I'm sort of I'm holding back from anything too big at the moment just in case um, I have to stop anyway um, the first thing I finished with was this lovely house Ooh. isn't that beautiful Let me get a bit closer. and this is a pattern from a book I feel like the camera's not wanting to focus very much today here we go um, this is a pattern from the book Sweet Crochet by Sandrine Davies. It's this one here. Um, and I've made projects from this book before actually. I made, um, this is Raymond, I made this one on the back a couple of years ago now and I really, really enjoyed making that. And um, I was having a tidy up of the um, crochet books and... Um, I came across it and there are a couple actually I really wanted to try. Um, I really wanted to make um, this one here, this sweet little guy. I love that. Um, and the other, well, th there's just loads of projects here, but this is the one I picked. It's, it's these houses from the Happy Village. Um, and they're just very basic. The um, the bottom of the house is all made in one piece. Um, so you just go in rounds and then you just stuff it and you make, um, I think you make two triangles for the roof. And then I've just added some very pretty um, little scraps of fabric for the bunting. I changed the door slightly um, from the rectangle to this sort of more curved door. And that was really because I was working it up this way. I just felt like it was going to be too big. So I just um, switched it on its side and add, added some arches. Um, I still feel like it might be a little bit big for the house, but I don't know. It's just something pretty and frivolous and um, I really, really enjoyed making it. Um, I suppose if I'd made it bigger, I could have used it as a cushion of sorts, but maybe I'll just, I'll use it for a pin badge or a pin badge, you know, to pin my badges on or, or something. Um, I just, just really enjoyed the process of making it actually and not having to think about design, just following a pattern. And, um, yeah, obviously it, it worked out very quickly. I made that up over the weekend. So I've just got it, um, up in my, um, craft room at the moment. Just, just makes me happy when I look at it. So that's the first thing um, and then the second thing I've been making are hearts. <laughs> I don't think um, you know I can pass February by without making some form of hearts and this year I really had a mind to make some vintage style hearts you know like um, the type you used to see on the vintage um, Valentine's cards if you've ever seen any sort of um, Victorian style Valentine's cards so um, and this is another really really quick make in fact I've made so many of them <laughs> I've made here we go five five beautiful roughly hearts there we go I um, absolutely love making these um, the nice thing about them is is the heart itself is all made in one piece just using the increases and decreases. Um, it, I suppose it has a tendency when it's um, before you add the ruffle to look a little bit square but a 
the top but by the time you've added those ruffles I really don't think that you can tell um, and I quite like this because normally if you were to work a heart you would work sort of up to here and create a sort of triangle then you would sort of work one peak and then you would have to fasten off your yarn and work the second peak of the heart um, but you don't have to with this pattern so um, I really like that about it you just make two sides identical and then you join and um, stuff it a little bit I've only really stuffed them ever so slightly um, so they're still actually quite flat and then um, you add the ruffles which obviously um, you know just made up by working lots of stitches into one so I'm really really pleased with those and I tried lots of very um, you know fresh colours to try and make them a bit more modern and this is also using um, an Aran weight cotton um, this is um, yes yeah, so this is made these are made with the um, Sheepcares Calista which um, I think is pretty much well I think it's a cross between an Aran weight and um, a DK weight maybe but no, it's definitely an iron weight. I think I'm just making that up. Let's have a look. It's uh, 50 grams, 85 meters, 4.5, 5 millimeter hook. Or maybe that's needles, I don't know. Um, it's 100% cotton. It can be a little bit splitty. Um, I think more so because I was working these up with a 4.5 because I don't know if you can see here, but this middle bit is created with a couple of chains and I didn't want them to be too gappy so I, I just went down half a hook size to a um, to a 4.5 so that I could keep that fairly tight um, and that you wouldn't really be able to see the um, the stuffing through it so um, and I think it makes them a nice size actually they're not too small they're not too um, that you know they're significant but they're not you know, you could still use those as wall hangings or um, pin cushions. I actually really like the kind of chunkiness of them. Um, so, um, and of course, you could you could do them in a DK weight with a, a four millimeter hook, um, and you would get a smaller a smaller heart. But I absolutely love those, um, and I you can tell I've really enjoyed making them. So I um, wrote the pattern up and that went up on the blog I think on Friday I managed to get that up on Friday night so the the free pattern is available on the blog for those if you'd like to have a go at making them um, you know if you want to print the pattern I did also create a, a PDF um, but um, there's a small charge for that so it, it's up to you really there are lots of photographs on the blog posts as well so um, yeah I really really taken with those um, some of them haven't got loops on and some of them have um, this one has got a little loop and um, again I've just joined that afterwards really by slip stitching through that middle stitch there so that it hangs behind so you can't really see the loops so um, someone did mention that you could fill these with um, lavender or, and I think that's a really lovely idea. I'm surprised I didn't actually do it myself, but um, yeah, you could, you could make them scented. Um, you could use the hooks and have them as hanging hearts, or you could, you know, forego the hooks and use them as pin cushions. Um, you know, I, yeah, just really, really happy with the way they turned out. Um, I was also tempted to go an extra row with the um, the ruffles and make them really big. But what I think I might try is just putting a little bit of silver thread um, around and see how that looks, just to sort of bling them up a bit. <laughs> so, um, yes, that's, yeah, probably my favourite um, project I can't really say this month because I was working them in January. Definitely my favourite project of January. And um, like I said, I, I really went to town making them up. So I'm going to give some of these away as gifts and keep some of them. Um, yeah, but so that's um, an iron weight cotton. Um, I know that the, you can use the sheep. Oh, the um, colours changing. You can use the sheep years. And um, I know that paint box also do a really nice iron weight cotton. So... Um, 
And then, uh, what have I, so that's one. And then the last thing I've brought up to show you is the beret. Since I didn't bring it up last week, it's still attached. I don't know if you remember before, probably back in November I showed this. I was making this with, I think this is Bernat um, Velvet. It is the most beautiful yarn. It comes in this really big um, ball. Um, I've left it attached to the hat. I did finish my beret hat. Here she is, looking all lovely and uh, velvety with her, um, these are popcorn stitches. Oh, you can't really see the pattern as well as I'd have liked with the um, velvet yarn, I think. So she's just a very simple beret style hat. So she lays flat like that. Um, she's finished and I am going to be working on writing the pattern up for this one next. The only reason that she's still attached to the ball is because um, I need to add another round, I think, to the actual, um, you know, the, the top of the hat. Um, because I won't, I won't put it on now, I've got my hair up. But um, when I put it on, it just, it wasn't coming out as much as I would like. So I'm going to just take that back slightly and add another row in the pattern or maybe maybe a row out of pattern because as you can see in the pattern on the final you do get these popcorn stitches just jutting out and I'm thinking maybe if I add an extra row of plain um, increases without the popcorns um, that might work better because obviously you end up you might end up looking like you're wearing horns you don't really I mean I've tried it on it looks fine but so that's the next pattern I'm going to be working on and this is an Aran weight um, yarn so I'm also going to make another one up in some normal Aran weight um, and just check how how that works up um, so yeah I was playing around with the increases with this because obviously you know when you increase for a circle um, you know, it's quite straightforward generally. Um, you would increase every sort of two stitches, every three stitches, every four stitches. Well, because of the placement of these popcorns, I then sort of moved the increases so they were almost symmetrical. Um, I'm not sure, if, because it was easier. I felt like it was easier, it would be easier to read and it was easier to chart. Um, I just, and it looks like a good circle to me, but I just want to work it up in the hour and just double check before I let that one go. So that will be up on the blog soon. Um, I'm going to make that my focus now. So uh, just in time for spring. <laughs> so that's it really. Those are the few things I've been working on. And um, I am doing some other bits and pieces. I forgot to say actually that the um, the house that I made is all, all made in DK cotton. These are this is a paint box um, cotton, and this was um, I think I might have shown again. It might have been in the November episode. I showed a load of um, yarns that my friend Haram had sent from Turkey, and this was one of the cottons. Um, and that, I mean that's what I've got left, but. It, it was really, really soft, really soft and such a lovely cotton to work with and not at all splitty. So um, I can't remember what it was called now. I did keep the um, the label, but I will, um, I'll put all the details in a blog post, all the show notes. So I'll, um, I will put what that was called because that was, um, that's some of the nicest cotton I've worked with in a while actually. So um, <clears throat> I really enjoyed working with that. Right, and I think that's it. I have got some new things to show. Um, the first are some giant cakes of recycled t-shirt yarn. This is paint box as well, and I love paint box. You can get paint box um, yarns from Love Crafts. And um, this is their recycled t-shirt yarn. And you get a whopping, I think this is 800 grams. So, um, and you use, it says between 12 and 15 millimeter crochet hook and it's made from, you know, was recycled t-shirts basically. So it's 90% cotton, 10% synthetic. Um, and Lovecrafts contacted me and asked if I would like to, um, you know, have a try. So of course I said yes, they sent me three of these. Um, on the website when you order the t-shirt yarn, you 
can you pick shades so i guess because of the nature because it's recycled from t-shirts they can't guarantee i guess the color so um i think you would have to be a little bit careful if you were doing um a really big project that and you wanted all the colors to be the same um they sent me three and i got two that were pretty much identical two in this um lovely pink shade it's like a baby pink and then the other one in this shade um i don't know if the camera oh my battery's flashing now i'm gonna, gonna have to change that i don't know if the camera will pick that up um let me go and change my battery and i'll i'll be back right where were we sorry about that i did actually stop and have a cup of tea as well <laughs> Um, so I was showing you these paint box t-shirt yarns. Here we go, I've got two up. So you can see the um, the slight differences in the colour. This one's more peachy and this one's definitely sort of a baby pink. So I think I might need to order a bigger crochet hook though. Now I've got a 10 millimetre and I've got a 20 millimetre. 12 to 15. I might have to, anyway, I'm getting distracted. So I'm going to try, um, there's a lovely pattern for um, a storage basket on the Lovecrafts website. So I'm going to try that. Um, and I may even, I'm thinking I may even try a supersized heart with that. So that's lovely. Sorry, I'm just checking I actually am recording. <laughs> right, um, what else? So um, I also, oh, this is a bit exciting. I bought my very first set of minis. These are from Hedro Yarns and I have been looking at everyone's lovely um, mini projects, all the lovely blankets and I have been lusting after one for so long now that I think I'm going to start one, uh, a, a blanket I think. I really liked Sandra's Battenberg blanket, I also saw that I think it was so sweet Violet was doing a granny square one so I think I might try something like that. I mean I don't have minis, um, this is like I said, this is the first set I bought, so I'm going to make a start with these and maybe mix it in with some other yarn to try and keep the cost down a bit, but um, like I said, these ones were from Hedro Yarns, I'll just, oh they're lovely, look at those colours, I mean I can see why people get so addicted to them because they're like, they're like sweeties aren't they? So um, it was a five, uh, a pack of five, I think, and but I've already rolled one up. Um, there's the other one. Just beautiful. So I think it will be a slow project because, um, like I said, I don't often work with sock yarn or anything like that. So it's not like I have lots of bits to put in, but I think slowly, slowly I will add to it. And then maybe by the end of the year, I will have a lovely mini project um maybe just a throw or something like that so i'm really really looking forward to working with those and um she was very lovely everything was beautifully packaged and it also came with a little bag of lavender and you know if you've got a lot of wool at home you will know that these are invaluable i, I put bags of lavender everywhere it does remind me of my nan actually. She used to do knitting, but she just used to put stems of lavender down the side of her sofas and things like that. And um, a lovely little tea light as well. So that was really sweet. And then the last thing I bought was another project bag. This is a small one. Um, look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's got little mice and daisies on it, which I love. I just love wild daisies. So that's beautiful. And that was by, um, there was no label sewn onto it, but, and I couldn't remember, but I, oh yeah, it's from the Fiverr Fox. I did write a little note in there to remind myself. So that's beautiful. Um, I just can't get over how talented people are that they can just whip things like this up on their sewing machines. I really wish that I could, um, so better so for now my minis my minis <laughs> are living in there um until I get time to do something with them but I am really really looking forward to starting that 
And then the last thing I bought was from the Literary Emporium. And they are, um, well, I think they're based in Froome, I th or maybe not. Um, Somerset Home Studio, yeah. So they're fairly local. Um, and she makes the most gorgeous pins and um, T-shirts, bookmarks, um, using quotes from classic books. Um, I just adore them. I've, I've been looking at them for so long. Anyway, um, she did a pin from um, using a quote from Little Woman. And obviously, I went to watch the film not long ago with my daughter and I absolutely adored it. Um, so I couldn't help myself. So this is a pin from um, Literary Emporium and it says, there is always light behind the clouds. Oh gosh, isn't that beautiful? And it's like, I don't know if that's coming across, but it's sort of a rose, rosy gold. It's a really big one. Um, it's got the two. So if you like pins, um, definitely go and have a look. Um, she does other stuff as well. I um, I also ordered another pin from there because um, to send to a, a very sweet friend. So, um, and that was a quote from Jane Eyre, but um, she's got ones with quotes from Frankenstein, um, Wuthering Heights, there are so many on my list that I want to get. Um, and they're not very expensive either, so, um, but they're, um, that's the, it's just gifts for book lovers. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to add that to my bag. Um, it comes with a, it came with a lovely bookmark with um, my reading list on it. Look, I love that. So <clears throat> definitely check them out. I will put the links in um, the show notes. And I think that is it for today. Um, I've brought a couple of books. My reading has slowed down a lot, um, which I kind of expected, but um, I am reading Agatha Christie's Appointment with Death. This is a Poirot book and I've not, although I love Poirot, I've never actually read any of the books, but I saw this one in a charity shop and it's just one of those lovely small books there you go you can see it was originally one pounds <laughs> and i think i paid probably about 30 40p maybe 50p for it in the charity shop but i just really really loved the cover <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> just there was just something about it and these these small books they remind me of the um Mills and Boone books my nan used to read and um, I don't know if she had like a subscription but every time we would go around there there would be lots of these thin little books and um, you know as a teenager that couldn't read fast enough um, I read a lot <laughs> I read a lot of her Mills and Boone books um, so yeah they, they're just perfect they're the perfect size to slip into your handbag or so I often just take this one in the car with me um so I am about halfway through but the writing is quite small as you can imagine for a book this size um but I love that I just I love that so I'm working my way through that one and the one I just finished is Sally Rooney's Normal People um, this, I think, was quite um, hyped up and well-read and well-reviewed. Um, and I think probably that put me off for a little while. But, <clears throat> again, I found it in the charity shop. There we go. It was pound fifty. So I just, I thought, I just couldn't not really for that. So, um, I was talking to a friend about this, actually, because I think they did it for the reading group in the library. And... I couldn't really get into it to start with. I think because I've been used to reading lots of thrillers. And of course, when you read a thriller, you know, the story generally is moving you forward. It's a, it's a, there's a lot of sus suspense. Um, so I actually haven't read a book like this um, for a long time. It's um, about two young people. I think they meet um, in their 
further education. So they must be 17, 18, um, and they start a relationship. And he's a very popular boy at school, and she is not. She she is not, but they're both very highly intelligent. And they start a relationship, and I feel like he's a little bit ashamed of her. Um, you know, they're both very young, that they're making mistakes. Anyway, the book sort of follows them through their... Um, their life at university and afterwards um, and their relationship and they're sort of on and off and on and off. Um, it is good. They are both very, very socially awkward people and it makes for a lot of miscommunication. I think that's probably a common uh, problem amongst younger people is that they, they don't um, effectively you know, um, show each other how they feel. And I wonder, I think maybe my eldest daughter might relate more to it than me. I did really enjoy it towards the end. I just felt that there, not a lot happens throughout the book. So there's nothing to, it's not a page turn, I, um, but it is, it is a lovely book. Um, it's refreshing, I think. It's a love story for a modern age. It deals with subjects such as depression and again <clears throat> in a very refreshing way I think because it's so open and honest about it. So um, it's actually the um, the young, um, the lad that um, suffers um, from de depression eventually and um, you know it's so nice to read about <laughs> men suffering from their mental health. You know I think this is quite a new conversation so um it, it's lovely that it's put in a a real life context you know it's not a romance in the traditional sense it's very honest and open um yes um and they're both you know they're both growing as people and um, making mistakes and um you know i feel like she she has been quite um I suppose in some ways damaged by her upbringing and so some of it's a little bit hard because um, you know just want to give her a big hug really but anyway it's good um, I would definitely recommend it um, it's a little bit different to the things I normally read um, I'm going to send it to my daughter and see what she makes of it if she's got time to read it because I think she may get more from it than I did. Um, like I said, I did, I didn't struggle to get through it. I just didn't feel very inclined to pick it up some nights. But saying that, I really, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I would recommend it. So, you know, just a different type of book. So I'm trying to stay away from the thrillers because I feel like they might be, um, <laughs> ruining my appreciation for other types of stories so I've also picked up this one um and I pre-ordered this one this is called Miss Austin and of course I had to read it <laughs> um this is the story um about the Austin sisters um and actually it's Cassandra's um Cassandra's story, so Jane Austen's sister, and it starts after the death of Jane, and Cassandra has, um, I think she's in her 60s, so we're still talking the 1800s, she, um, she goes looking back to um, a house, she goes looking for letters that were written between, I think, her and her sister, um, that she doesn't want to get destroyed or I'm not really sure I'm only about 25 pages in um, and so far um, I'm enjoying it so I'll let you know how I get on with that but I just thought that would be um, really interesting um, let me see if I can okay it says um, 23 years after the death of her famous sister Jane Cassandra Austin returns to the village of Kintbury and the home of her family friends the Fowls she knows that in some dusty corner of the sprawling vicarage there is a cache of family letters containing secrets that must not be revealed. As Cassandra recalls her youth and her relationship with her brilliant yet complex sister, 
she pieces together buried truths about Jane's history and her own, and she faces a stark choice. Should she act to protect Jane's reputation or leave the contents of the letters to go unguarded? Based on, li on a literary mystery that has long puzzled biographers and academics, Miss Austen is a wonderfully, wonderfully original and emotionally complex novel about the loves and lives of Cassandra and Jane Austen. So yes, um, I'm excited to get further into that. And that is it. Um, what have I been watching on the telly? The new season of Sabrina. Um, and I've just started watching actually the, I think it's called The Wonderful Mrs. Maisel. I think it's, that's what it's called. Um, I am really enjoying that. I'm only two episodes in and I think there's about three seasons of it. So I am quite behind. Um, but yes, I'm really enjoying that. So I think that is everything for this episode. I hope I haven't waffled on too long. I feel, um, I feel like maybe I have. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're all doing well. And um, I will see you again in a couple of weeks. Take care. Bye.